great partnership with KHRC on all of those things. And they've got some new programs that for really designed for that middle income, that workforce income um, sector. But with all those public dollars and all those public programs, are we really solving the challenge? I'm not sure. It's going to take local leadership, it's going to take partnerships, it's going to take networking, it's going to be, take experimentation, it's going to take working with the business community as a partner to address housing to really, really turn the dime in Kansas um, on this challenge. But I really believe that this conversation can be a start on those new practices and on those new experiments and networking with each other to say, you know, I'm thinking about this, but I really need to do a check-in. Who do I check in with? Um, the resource partners are here for you. Uh, the ideas are going to be elevated today that will give you some pause to thought. But please, please talk among yourselves and talk with all of us. Um, this, this is the start of a conversation. This is not the end of the conversation. This is a start on the problem solving. Um, and with all of you uh, working shoulder to shoulder with all the resource partners in the public and private sector, I think there's a lot we can accomplish in the next decade. So thank you. And with that, I am turning it over to Linda Hunsaker, is that correct? Um, who is from the Kansas Department of Commerce. And Linda's going to talk to you a little bit about the Housing Interagency Council, what we do, and the housing assessment tool and what it is and how it can benefit your community in terms of that money ball data set. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patty. As Patty said, I, with Kansas Department of Commerce and the Community Development Block Grant Program, and probably a couple of years ago, um, we contacted USDA Rural Development and KHRC and decided that we wanted to build a partnership that talked about the housing needs. And I run the CDBG housing portion of, of our program there. And we just wanted to work together to try to solve and just quit doing the same old thing. I had gone to a conference and realized that the thing that we were not doing is planning. You plan for water, you plan for streets, you do comprehensive plans, but has anybody ever stopped and planned for housing and talked about housing? And I didn't think that that was something I could do um, or I wanted to sit in my office and do by myself. So we, we formed our Kansas Housing Partnership Group. Uh, we've since added a few more like Federal Home Loan Bank and things like that. Um, and we met and talked about housing and talked about things we wanted to do and what we could do to to make housing better for the state of Kansas. And they're passing out brochures. The blue one basically talks about the CDBG program. Um, just because I had the opportunity to talk about the program, I decided to hand out the brochures. Uh, the other one is about what we're going to talk about here specifically today with the Kansas um, Housing Assessment Tool. The assessment tool was one of the first things that came out of our Kansas Partnership Group. Um, once and we designed the tool. My goal was with the assessment tool is for those small communities in rural Kansas that do not have $20,000 laying around to hire a consultant to do an assessment of housing. I wanted to create something. My mission was to create something that any small town could do, whether you're 100, whether you're 200, whether you're 5,000, and you just don't want to spend the money on the consultant. You can do this yourself, and that's the mission and that's the goal, is to have something that you can use to talk about housing and, and start that conversation in your community. And so I will go ahead and start with this PowerPoint. If you have any questions, um, I'm, I can do this PowerPoint in 10 minutes or I can do it in an hour. So if you have a burning question, I want to start the conversation, and that's why we're all here today, is to talk about housing and, and solve those needs. So if you have a question, please let me know, because I can buzz through the rest of it, and uh, we, that way we'll start the conversation, which I think will be good. Whoops.
And some of this may be repetitive of what I just said and why you create the housing plan is so you know where you're going to go. It's your roadmap of what you have in your community and what you, um, where you might want to go. The housing assessment tool has four parts to it. Um, and just so I don't forget, it can be found on our Kansas Commerce uh, slash CDBG website under housing assessment tool. But it has four parts, and part one is the stakeholders and organization. <coughs> Who was involved in creating the housing assessment tool, which we call a HAT. So if I say HAT, so the assessment tool, that's just our, our version of that. Um, we want to know what stakeholders and organizations you used. To do a hat, to create a good hat, you cannot sit in your office as the economic development director or the city manager or the city clerk and fill out this form and do it properly. Can you do it? Yes, you can. You know enough about your town and where you live, you can sit there and do that. But is that a good way to do the hat? No. Well, I, when you came, come to me with a hat, will I say this is a great job? And do you think I don't know that? Yes, I do. Um, so we want to know that you've brought in stakeholders, that you've had meetings, you've done surveys, um, whatever that you needed to do in your community. Every community works a little differently. So um, we want to know who was part of this organization. When you get the housing assessment tool, I don't want to know that the First State Bank was a participant and the the Lions Club was a participant. I want to know who was involved in that. Because in small communities, everyone wears a hundred different hats. That's how you get things done in small communities. So I want to know that the banks were involved, the realtors were involved, but I also want to know the name. So that I know if you had two people involved in this and that other person has six different hats on to, serve, to make it look like you had this big committee and a bunch of stakeholders and organizations involved. So let me know in there who was involved and the process that you did to create the hat. It's all about bringing in stakeholders. So the purpose is on this is to do, to look at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your priorities. There again, it needs to be completed locally by the stakeholders. <coughs> Use to develop your goals of your community. Just like I said, it's a roadmap of what your housing is. Don't rush the process. Like I said, anyone can sit in there and probably do this hat in a couple hours and fill it out and submit it to me. But it's not a good process. You need to involve people which would require surveys or meetings or something like that. To create your stakeholders or get involved, but you can do many things. You know what works in your community, I don't, and what might work in one community doesn't always work in every community. You can do a survey and send that out. You can select a team and they go talk to different civil groups that they're involved in and bring back the information and you put it all together. You can hold a public meeting if that works in your community probably better prepare food. That's the way they always get in there in small communities. Um, but you figure out the best way to engage your citizens and get your citizens to be involved in housing. I have people tell me over and over again, our people just don't come to meetings. And my response is, like it or not, if they don't want to come, you can't get people involved, do you really have a housing problem? If you can't get the stakeholders, you don't have people involved, you probably, it's probably a problem you perceive, but nobody else does. So really consider that and look at that. We ask you to select an area when you do an assessment tool. I live in Ellis. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Ellis. It's right along the interstate, 16 miles west of Hayes. If I was to do a, a hat for the city of Ellis or participate in that, I can't look at Ellis without looking at Hayes uh, because Hayes is, a, is a, a larger community and it just doesn't make sense for me to do a housing assessment tool because too many people tr are transport back and forth or go there to work. So you need to think uh, regionally when you do the assessment tool and figure out where are you a bedroom community? Are you one, one of those larger cities that, that has a lot of businesses that people uh, live and work there. 
So look at it regionally and see if that's something that affects your community or not. We also in the hat want you to look at the businesses, the top five businesses and those uh, people that employ citizens that live in your city. Without businesses, as Patty kind of mentioned, what, what's chicken or egg, which comes first? But without knowing what those top businesses are in your community, you don't know, are they planning growth? Are they planning shutdown? Do they have people that commute from 40 miles, 30 miles? Uh, what's going on in that business? Can they not grow because of not having enough housing? Um, I've also heard about communities that have either lost businesses because they're not ha there's no housing, or else they hire someone, they, they bring their wife to come look for a place to live, and she says, we're not living here. I'm not living in that house that's available, and that's the best one available. So they lose a good employee. So it's important to look at the top five businesses at least, and know what the direction is of that business. And if you don't have any in your town and you're looking at, at near a bedroom community, look at that other area. Where's your people going to work? Um, so you know what's going on in there. Because that, that's going to dictate your housing. That's going to tell you where you're going to go with your housing. And is the, any of those businesses willing to, do they have such a problem that they're willing to contribute to the housing concerns? Um, we heard at the housing conference last year, year before, I heard about businesses that were willing to do help with down payment on homes because they realized that $5,000 of down payment assistance helped them maintain those employees and didn't, they didn't have to keep recruiting and training and that was because of the training that required in that particular business. It was money well spent because once they bought a home, they probably are going to stay there and work for that employer for a considerable amount of time. So will they be willing to participate in any um, housing things you can solve and things you can come up with? Of course, with any assessment tool or with any kind of planning, you have to look at population characteristics and housing characteristics. Uh, we have done this to like what, what's going on now using the census data and then what was going on 10 years ago and it just made me think when Patty was talking maybe we ought to do with maybe projections for the next 10 years as well. So that may be something that since this form is so new, a um, couple three years old, it's still being tweaked. So make sure that you fill out that data as to the best of your ability. It may require, if you're in a small town and there is no census data for that town, it may require you doing a windshield survey to go out and find out really how much dilapidated um, properties that you have out there. Also, we asked for past actions. What have you done, or the, what has the city done in the past um, in regards to how, housing? What activities or what have you spent? What have you done? Um, so what would you describe as your needs? So it's kind of a past action. It's just kind of a general, oops, did it again. We also look at the current infrastructure. We ask you to look at that. If you have a water problem or a water shortage, can you, does it do you any good to build a new housing complex if you already have a water shortage? If your sewer treatment plant is at capacity now, is that something that you need to solve in, in hand in hand with solving housing or something that you need to take care of first because if you, if your infrastructure is at capacity, the ability for you to add multi-family housing or new housing at any degree or any level is going to be is going to be hindered. So you need to think about your current infrastructure and what's going on with there. We look at visual appearance. If you're not taking, I know this is one of the things that when Debbie and I do our site visits for CDBG projects. When we do the site visits, if your town, you're not taking care of your town, I'm not real interested in giving you $400,000 more money um, until you're willing to do something to help the appearance 
I'm not willing to put any investment into your community. So it'll give you a good opportunity to look at the visual appearance of what people think of your community. Some of you may have um, homeless issues that you need to address or something that you need to talk about there, and environmental issues. Um, there may be train tracks. You may be in a floodplain, um, which Ellis is. Most of the town is in floodplain. So there are environmental issues that need to be looked at as you're looking at this as well. Then we ask any other factors that are unique to your community that we can't specifically identify in a housing assessment tool. Or things that you've discovered through your planning or other issues that your community might have. Just other factors and things that is unique. Then we ask you to analyze the data. Once we get this all done, this is one of the things that we added after the first year. We realized that uh, we asked you to do all this, but never did analyze it. Once you've completed all this, what has your community learned? You know, what is it telling you? And this is where you have to really caution yourself and dig deep into the data and to the research that you have done. And this is how I can tell if somebody sat in their office and completed the hat. Because I look at the data as an independent person that's maybe, maybe has been in your town, maybe has not been in your town, and as I analyze the data that you have in your hat, it's not the way you analyzed it. Because you came in with, it, with a preconceived notion that this, I want senior housing. I know I have senior housing. I need senior housing. Because my mom wants to find a place to live and she can't, so therefore it must be a problem. Your data may show that you've lost 50% of your seniors in the last 10 years. Now tell me if you lost 50% of your seniors in the last 10 years, why senior housing is, a, is your issue if your 21 to 50 income increased, or population increased by 50%. So that's, those are the kind of things that really look at the data. Don't just assume that you know and if and be truthful about it so try to open up your mind and that's one of the toughest thing i think for a lot of people to do is they go into this with the idea of what they what they think is going on and what you need to do is open up your mind and try to really assess it so you can really learn what the assessment is telling you what is the specific needs and goals that you have that you want to set up for your community as you go through the assessment tool, as, you, as you've completed it? Is the housing adequate for your community? You may find at the end of the day, once you've completed this, that really you're not in as bad a shape as you thought you were. Just an option. Um, and going back to what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and, and priorities that you have been able to identify as you completed the assessment tool. After you complete the housing assessment tool, then what do you do with it? <laughs> and I think the key, if you take nothing else away from this, I don't care if you use a hat, I don't care if you hire a consultant, I don't care what tool you use, I believe, I truly, truly believe that you need to plan for housing. You need to know where you've been and where you're going to go or you don't know what you need. Through the HAT and through our Kansas Housing Partnership Committee, we have then taken it a step farther and we created the HIAC, which is the Housing Interagency Advisory Committee. And what you can do with your communities is it was created to guide you about different housing programs by looking at your HAT and say, I have a program, USDA, USDA has a program, KHRC has a program that might help. Um, so what we've tried to do is after you've completed the HAT, there's also a profile at that same website that you can complete. Um, it's not required for any programs like, a CD, like the CDBG program. Right now, currently, the Housing Interagency Committee attendance is not required to submit a CDBG. 
Will that change in the future? Possibly. Um, haven't figured out 2015 application grants yet. Um, but in the past, or this past year, we did meet, um, it was usually the third Wednesday, March through July. We avoided the winter months, so we didn't get caught up there. Um, in 2013, we had meetings in Topeka in March, April, and May. And then we tried a video conference in June. The video conference worked out with the logistics was a little bit complicated trying to figure it out. But once we got it all figured out and got the places set up, it didn't work bad. So we may try that again. And in July, we held it in Hayes just to offer something for the western half. What we do at the Hayek meetings is that we you complete the profile, you submit their hat, the hat that you've done, at least two weeks prior to the meeting, which comes to me, and then we have you either come to Topeka, come to Hayes, or join us through the video. The community then gives us a half hour presentation on on your housing assessment tool, how you created it, what you did, that type of thing. And then the agencies, each agency, we work together with you and talk about programs that we have that might solve some of the problems that you have. So instead of you going to CDBG and talking to me, and then traveling to USDA Rural Development, and then going to KTRC, you get us all at the same table. Um, we've also invited um, Federal Home Loan Bank um, to, to join us if, if possible. So it really gives you an opportunity to sit down then with a, for a couple hours with all the agencies and really talk about what they have. Um, we, like I said, this is my contact information. If you have any questions or anything, like I said, the key of this is to plan. No matter what tool you use, this is just something that I will also tell you that each community that have done, has done this, completed it, I've had many, many communities that have complained to me about, I can't believe you made this a requirement for CDBG. And I will tell you my applications are down. You know, we don't get as many applications as we, did, as we used to. And I, I know it's because I require the hat. But I sit back and I think about it, and I think about how many communities that have actually completed it that have also told me, we did not like you for making us do it, but thank you. Thank you for making us do it. Because we have a clear understanding of our community, of our housing, and where we want to go, and what we need. So. It may not be a fun thing, it might be easier to call up a consultant and say, come do a housing assessment for us, and that's great if you have the money to do it. But I still think the ground, the grassroots effort, and the time that you invest in this, and the time your community invests in this, whether this tool or another tool, is time well, well spent. And I couldn't encourage it more, and, um, I thank the housing partnerships the team that we have because it, without that, we couldn't make this work. And it's another good opportunity for us to get together every month um, and, and talk about housing as far as that goes as, with the communities. And we really do enjoy the face. Video's nice. Doesn't require a lot of travel to do that. But I really miss the face on face, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication of the HIAC. So I do enjoy um, the other thing I would say with a HIAC, bring as many people, I say bring as many people, but uh, you don't need to load up a bus, but the HIACs that we've done where one person or two people show up, usually that means that they did the bulk of the work, and it's really not a community effort, it's not the town effort, it's usually somebody that's on a mission and wants to submit a CDBG application. <laughs> so I would get the involvement, get the community involved and see what they have to say and, and really do it correctly and I think you'll really gain a lot from it. Any questions? So the idea of today is to have a conversation. 
We're ahead of schedule, and Daniel and I have microphones, so let's have a little conversation. We've had two presenters so far, Patty and Linda, and Linda, you want to come up front here? Daniel, if you want to take that side of the room over there. So we have a little time. So Linda, let me offer the first question. So Linda, I hear you say that even though it's a little upfront work, you know, it, spending some time, doing some planning, doing some analysis will pay off better Definitely. down the road, right? Can you give a couple of examples of some projects or some ideas where that's that how that's played out? Could you give a couple examples of that? I can. Um, I don't know if John was in the room. I thought Lions uh, when they started the housing assessment tool. They had done some um, CDBG rehab, and they had also done some home rehab with projects. And so when they started on this, their idea was to look at that and, and possibly do something more in that area for homeowner rehab. When they got the assessment done, they realized that one-third of their community was rentals. One-third. which. But before the assessment tool, they did not realize that, and they had done several owner-occupied um, grant applications and owner-occupied rehab. So this allowed them to take a step back and they go, wait a minute, there's a segment of our society out there of the housing stock that we have, one-third of it, that we have not addressed at all. I think that's the biggest one that I've seen that it's like, wow, we really need to, to address our rental rehab um, project. That's great. So questions, I'll bring the mic, we'll bring the mic to you. Quentin, Quentin Bennett from McPherson. Can you briefly highlight for us some of the ways that groups have tried to do this process have run into uh, sabotage or others who might try to defeat the process? I think that the, the most sabotage that I have seen, or basically what you say, is when one person sits in their office and does it themselves. Or they hire, which most of you, I know a lot of you in the room here, and you all know with the CDBG program, we have the cert grant, certified grant administrators. Um, the first year we kicked this off, don't hold the administrators to blame, it's I'm to blame to tell them that they're not supposed to be just doing the hat for you. Um, they can facilitate meetings and that's one of the things, thank you for that question because it reminded me of something I needed to say. We have regional program managers and that map is on our website as well. They are more than happy to come out and facilitate any kind of meeting for you. So, uh, but I would say that when, when the grant administrators that I the first year we did that, a grant administrator completed two cities' hats for them. I knew that because I put them side by side. <laughs> and so the name was changed and that was about that. Um, so I really asked the administrators to not do that and so that's when we brought in the re regional program managers. Not to complete the hat for you because I still, you still need to be the one to complete the hat but to help facilitate meetings and, and provide some input to you. Yeah, it's interesting, I'm walk over, make a comment, I'll walk over. This idea of, well, you might get people upset, people, you might have controversy. Well, my guess is the controversy is probably in the community already. And so the question is, when do you want the conversation? Do you want it at the front end or at the last minute? Isn't it better to get that conversation going earlier, right? Yes, because when we come out there and do site visits and we ask questions and we say things and we get blank faces, we know that maybe the planning wasn't done the way it was supposed to be. Uh, I'm Sue Greenleaf Taylor from Greensburg, Kiowa County, and I want to, um, I'm so proud of myself because I had two questions and I remembered it through those last two comments. <laughs> Number one question, uh, the idea of your stakeholders uh, we have a private investment group that's developed since our tornado. Do I need for all of the people involved with that to become stakeholders, or does that just need to be a representative from the group? And the next question could